course. Thank you. Thank you very much, Poslan. Okay, so it was 6 a.m. in the morning when I decided to leave my comfy sheets and go for a walk beneath the dawn. So I got up, washed my face, and head to the door. And as I was going down my apartment stairs, I sensed the fresh air on my bare morning face, as if I opened the freezer. And, as, and I was, as I was walking leisurely to my favorite spot, I felt rejuvenated and more alive than ever. I walked with full awareness of every step I take and full existence in the present moment. And the further I get from home, my, my, comfort, my comfort zone, the more freedom I feel. And as I arrived agilely, I gazed at the painting like sunrise, and I sluggishly shut my eyelids. And I started noticing the sounds of nature, the sounds of the birds and the calmness of the morning city, transferring its way in me. I felt a void in me and a strike of acne. And I ask myself, who am I? According to the Buddha and his three most famous and life-changing teachings, he approached the self as a non-self, as in who you are objectively stripped from what we refer to as the illusionary self-made I. Who are you without your gender, possession, the sense perceived body, nationality, race, religion, profession, and other things we unconsciously and unintentionally associate with our identity, such as being a mother, a father, a wife, a husband, or our dislikes and likes, or things that happened to us in the past. Those are merely human mind experiences and emotions. To absorb purely who we are, we have to go beyond our senses, our emotions, and the things we encounter. When a young child learns, learns his name, he learns to associate this sequence of words with who or she is. Later on, a child learns the magic word I, and they equate it with who they are gradually escalating to learn the word my, mine, me. And here comes the stage called identification with objects. They derive their identity from objects they possess, such as toys. So when my toy breaks or taken away from me, we experience a heartbreak, some suffering in some sense, not because of the intrinsic value of that toy, but because of the thought mine, the toy becomes part of the child's identity, AKA our ego. People have been fighting for years over religion and politics for decades, not because they think it's the right path, regardless of the act of justifying their beliefs by philanthropy, but because they have associated this religion or regime or any kind of man-made regulation to their identity. It becomes who they are. Thus, whenever what we believe in is being questioned or attacked, the egoic minds, mind feel threatened because we feel that our identity is being threatened. We feel that we are being attacked. And this series of sanctification to materialism as it's part of our intrinsic value and sense of self grows with us till the day we die. And we forget to listen to our sense, our own sense of spirituality. Consequently, to awaken your spirituality in order to break the cycle of slavery that we have been shaping ourselves for ages. We need to listen to ourselves by spiritual acts, such as meditation. Meditation is an act of reflecting on yourself and understanding yourself. I genuinely believe that if our generation starts implying meditation in their daily day, daily day basis routines and try comp and tr truly comprehend the power of mental health and self-awareness, 
we would have a better society in the near future. Now, if a process of meditation helps us be self-aware, to have more empathy and be utterly compassionate, to be more mindful of the way we speak, sit, walk, and the way we communicate with each other. If this process promises that we would be more patient and loving, letting go of all the negative negativity and egoism, then we should raise awareness and we should start implying this in our daily day basis.